Hey hi all today we will discuss about what are the differences between workflow process builder and flow so let's start So first is workflow rules so workflow in salesforce is a tool that automates certain actions based on particular criteria if the criteria or conditions are met the actions get executed and when the criteria is not satisfied records will get saved but no action will be evaluated workflow is a container that consists of two components as follows one is criteria it contains the condition which if found correct then action will be executed second will be actions first the criteria is met and then what all actions that particular workflow has to do it contains the actions that should be performed when the criteria is met actions in work workflow rules are of two types depending on when they are executed one is immediate actions these actions are executed immediately <coughs> when the criteria for a rule are met then another is time triggered actions these actions execute at a specific time that is specified when creating this type of action mostly a uh, workflow is outdated nowadays but if we know the differences and if we know how your workflow rule used to work or how workflows what all actions they have then it can be helpful the reason we are making <coughs> we are making this video there are four types of actions that can be specified in a workflow rule an email alert task field update outbound messages then we will talk about process builder process builder it's an another automated tool or we can say a process builder is an extension of workflow with some additional features so process builder is the superset workflow is a subset of process builder because process builder has some different functionalities or features which process builder gives us uh, which workflow doesn't give so process builder is a superset This automation tool is easy to construct has abundant functionality and has increased the justifying work an admin can do. In process builder you can create an entire process in one integrated place rather than creating various workflows. Because we have to create workflow uh, criteria and if the particular criteria is met then we can have multiple updates field updates. we cannot have a multiple criteria in process builder we can have that <coughs> it consists of various actions associated with it like creating records updating records posting on chatter launching or triggering the flow submitting the record automatically for an approval calling or triggering apex code quick action invoking another process sending an email alert With process uh, process builder admins finally access the ability to demonstrate a proper order of operation or process before process builder admin admins were grappling with complex evasion just to be sure task occurred in logical order also process builder have versions so you can hold on to the activated processes this can be beneficial if you have real, realized something that is not working since you can recall some seeing what was happening previously then we will talk about salesforce flows so salesforce flow is the superset now process builder and workflow are the subsets of the salesforce flow it's an evaluation uh, evolution <coughs> sorry uh, it's an evolution of the automation in salesforce whereas the point and click is concerned like firstly we were having workflow then it evolved into process builder then it evolved into salesforce flows and as you might be aware of like in each and every release salesforce is uh, doing something or adding something in the flows to make it more powerful so what is flow in salesforce in salesforce a flow is a tool that automates complex business processes simply put it collects data and then does something with that data logically flow builder is the declarative interface used to build individual flows flow builder can be used to build code like logic without using a programming language uh, language it's a point and click out of the box 
flows fall into five categories that is screen flows, schedule triggered flows, auto launched flows, record triggered flows, platform event triggered flows. So screen flows will be, these are the flows in which we will have an uh, UI element and require input from users. This type of flows are either launched as an action or embedded as an element on the lightning page. Then we have scheduled triggered flows. These are auto launched flows launch at a specific time and frequency for each record in a batch and they run in the background. Auto launched flows run automated tasks. With this flow type auto launched flows can be worked from another flows process builder from within an apex class from a set schedule from record change or from platform events. Then we have record triggered flows. These automated flows run in background either before a record save or after the record is saved when a record is created, updated or deleted according to the selections which we have selected while creating a record triggered flow. Then we have platform event triggered flows. When a platform event message is received, this auto launch flow runs in the background. So these are the five categories of the flow. Then when, why we should use a flow. If you need to generate a new automated business process or user guided experience that does not reach the complexity threshold for Apex code, then flow is your go to tool. If you are modifying an existing process that was built with process builder or flow, then you should consider a number of factors when deciding whether to modify the existing process or to migrate it to flow. Flows are able to create, edit and delete records in Salesforce, send emails, show relevant data and gather inputs from user and generate outbound messages. What are the considerations? If the logic is too complex, Apex code should be used. Each release brings new features that reduce the use cases that requires Apex. But there are still some situations where Apex will bring a performance boost and should be considered. Renewal generation, opportunity product and other pieces of automation that were traditionally built as Apex code can now be built on flows, preserving code space for projects that require Apex. Apex code should be used in the following scenarios. Your flow requirement requiring uh, require nesting loops that cannot be eliminated by using the filter or sort, uh, sort selection. Oh, sorry. Sort collection actions that become uh, that became available in Spring 22. There is an existing tr trigger framework on an object. Your flow requirements require get elements inside a loop. You are working with a very large data volumes. You need custom built integrations with other systems that require more than a simple call out to an external service. So uh, it's a service. So this is majorly a difference and what all the automation tools out of the box or click and point provides in the Salesforce. We discussed about the workflow process builder and flows. In the upcoming videos, we will discuss about the new features which Salesforce is coming for the flows. Thank you.